Hello there. Today I'm going to talk to you about assembling the band, the facings, the collar and the zip on the Journey and the Monterey hoodie. Now, in the Journey I'm making the collar option and in the Journey that's a fold over collar option which is, which is one colour so it folds over like that. Um, you'll see I've already put my interfacing on like a good girl so that that um that that folds over like that in the monterey it's seamed here and in the hoods they're different options but you sew them together but the principles are absolutely still the same now to get this to to fit neatly what you need to do is make sure that you've got all the markings on this piece um so here's my here's my edge here's my um uh facing there's a little mark there and a little mark there Another mark there, that's the centre one. You'll need those to be lining up what we're going to do next. So, let me adjourn to the next section. So here I have my semi-sewn journey. Um, I've got the raglan sleeves put in here. Um, the side seams are sewn. Uh, so that includes the underarms of the seam here. I have also actually put the cuffs on. Uh, the reason why I've done that, and I'll show you another stage presently, um, is because I think I can put my overlocker away now, which is which is just marvellous. So here we go. So this is the uh, this is going to be the left hand side of it. This is the correct way out. So my fabric is mild on this side, um, and it's uh, lighter on this side. And here you can see my interfacing running down there. And here's my collar piece. So do you remember in the last section I said do make sure that your um, your markings are here. So there you go. I always think at this stage, gosh, I should have, should have done my nails before I started. But hey ho, we're here for the um, we're here for the sewing, aren't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip clip this on, and I'm going to make sure I follow the markings as I go. So remember, on most Sinclair patterns, the seam allowance like these ones on the raglan here is six mil. Um, I'm going to work in metric for today. Um, I hope you just remember to look back at what the imperial one is. Um, on this section, the markings are ten mil. Um, sorry, the seam allowance is a 10 mil, and I'm sure if you ask Xana, she'll tell you why that is. But hey ho, that's what it is. But you must do that in order to get the um, zip to fit nicely, because all of this will help to sandwich in the zip. So I'm here putting all my markings on. So you can see here I've got markings on each shoulder and markings for the centre. So there's my marking on the shoulder. It's quite nice working daylight, although it's the middle of winter here. Um, it's the 22nd of December, I think I'm doing this. Um, the, the light's really quite bright. So as long as I finish before about three o'clock in the afternoon, we should be fine. I should have the, yes, look, I'm, I'm being very good. I did my markings. I wish I could tell you I'm this good when I'm not on the camera. Now, I, I do always mark centre markings. I think it's really important for... For symmetry and for getting the thing to light to, to lay correctly to do that now i'm probably doing way more pins than i would do normally but this is this is just to show you i've got a little bit too much interfacing there let me snip that off and when you're doing your interfacing um, i'm sure you all know this already i'm sure you've made lots lots of these things do make sure that you don't stretch the um stretch the fabric as you're going because again going back to the we're putting a zip in here we do need it to match so there's my little blue marking I couldn't believe how many marking pens and pencils and implements I own. Um, there's still things I can't get to show correctly, but hey ho. Pens are quite good. I, I cut this with a projector. Um, and pens are, pens are quite good because you can see them when the lights are off. Right, here we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera while I go away to my sewing machine. Like I said, I think I've got to the stage where I've got all my overlocking done. Yeah, there's way, way too many clips on there, but whatever. So here you go. So there is the entirety of my collar. Look, there's there's the one side goes all the way around to the other side. All my notches are matched up neatly and I'll go to my sewing machine and sew this up. The reason why it's recommended that we use the sewing machine rather than the serge is so we don't add additional bulk. All of those seams are going to be enclosed. Uh, that gets that gets hidden away very, very cleverly later on. So you don't need to worry about finishing those those seams. I'll be back soon. Bye. So now we're at the stage where we've finished sections 13, 14, 15 or 16 on the Journey or 9 to 13 on the Monterey. So whatever hood option you've chosen or collar option you've chosen, you'll have your hood sewn all the way from here 
to here and you'll have a nice neat edge. Check your seam allowances. I used um, a very, very slight stretch stitch on that, so I think it was too long by half wide. Um, it does need to have a little bit of give there. Uh, when we come to sewing the zip in, we don't need to do that at all. So, on to the next section is 17 on the journey or 14 on the Monterey, which is attaching the band. So, we look at the bottom of the garment here. Um, so, here we are with the, the garment there and the other corner. Here's my band. So again, this should have some nice markings on to help you um, line it all up. In particular, you've got the... I need to trim the interfacing again, don't I? Even in the middle of winter, it's very, very warm using an iron, isn't it? I try not to do it apart from sewing. So there we... that one goes there. Uh, we've all got different methods for clipping. As I'm sure, sure you realise, I go... Uh, both ends, line up the centre and then adjust to suit. On the, um, just orientating myself. One thing I do like about clipping is also you can, you can just stop and check. Um, the band on this is, has a very slight ease attached to it. I have not marked the centre of that, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, put a pin in it on the half. So I'm going to fold it in half. See, all the prep I tried to do to be good for you guys on camera didn't quite work. So I'm just folding it in half and I'm going to put a pin there to mark where my centre is. I know I did the centre back, but obviously if I, I didn't quite remember to do that pin. It was late last night when I was cutting it. So there's my centre back marked with blue. There's my centre back marked with my pin. I think pins are, pins are nice for just mudging markings like that because they're nice and accurate. And then see, I've got a slight difference, a slight easing of the band into the garment. Now, I know you all know how to do this, so I'm going to ease that in and sew that on. I'm going to use a stretch stitch like I did in the last section, which is uh, too, too long by half wide. Actually, this fabric's really quite thick, so I'll probably go two and a half long. So. I'll sew that up and come back and show you what happens next. I've just remembered something I wanted to show you or tell you before we move on to that section. Don't forget that this seam um, allowance is also 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch. I have just look, look, looked it up. Um, my, my machine is metric, which is why I sew in metric. Um, so it's 10, it's 10 mil, 3 eighths of an inch. And again, that's to allow the loop, which contains the zip, to be exactly the right length for you. I'll be back. I'm going to show you this from the inside uh, simply because it's easier to see the seams. So here's my waistband at the bottom. There's my waistband seam. Goes all the way up the front. There's the next seam and there's the collar. So now we are on to, in the journey section 18, prepare facings or 15 in the Monterey. This one is absolutely essential that we do interface it. What I've done is I've also, I've done the overlocking, the finishing of this edge side. Um, it's an earlier stage. Um, remember I said earlier on that it was nice to be able to put the overlocker away. Well, I think if I've done this, I think I've done all the overlocking. Fingers crossed. So here we go. So that is neatly interfaced on the back. It's overlocked on the longer edge and the longer edge is the one that's going to show. This is the one that's going to help you enclose the zip and it's done on both sides. So we are going to work on lining those up. Now, it's easier with the garment facing the right way up. And what we need to do, I'm going to try and get the one in camera. That will show nicely for you. So this is going to be the left hand side. Not that it matters, but you can, I hope you can now see you've got the line of the neck going upwards towards the left shoulder. And what we need to do is find the one of those that matches it. And it's this one. Okay, so when that turns the right way, that'll that'll match. Sorry, when that turns the inside. So that's the one we're going to be working with today. And we do clip it in a couple of places. I really should have done the trimmed all the interfacing before I came on came on camera. It's not that it's stretched, it's that I cut interfacing very inaccurately and trim it afterwards. We all have some lazy habits, so there's way worse things to be doing with your life than that. So there we are. Again, remember these are gonna be um, 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances. Way more clips than you, than you need. On this next one, I'm actually gonna pin that 
um, I'm going to pin the top of it. So that's the bottom clip to the waistband. What I'll do is I'll spend a couple of seconds just showing you what that's going to end up looking like. Um, so I'm going to use the straight edge of here. It's If you're using one of the collars, it's probably a slightly different shape. Sorry, if you're using one of the hoods, it's probably a slightly different shape, but don't worry, the principles are the same. So if you start by, bad girl, scissors. I'm not re-recording it just for, just for the sake of trimming that before we start. So I'm going to I'm going to pin it because pi I find pinning on the curve slightly easier. But I am a bit old school sometimes. Now what you'll see here is is now is when this little marking is so so important. So that little marking lines up with the edge of there, and I hope I've got that in the right place. I think I have. So I'm going to pin that. And that keeps it at the right angle, and it, it tapers on off to almost nothing. I'm going to stop the video in a second and just check one of the measurements. But see, that's going to curve round into there and it will all make sense. So you need to sew that curved bit to that straight bit. What you're doing here is creating a loop. So the loop goes front of the garment, waistband of the garment, facing of the garment, collar of the garment or the hood. And what that will do is that will magically sandwich all the way around your zip in the next sections. Let me just check a measurement. Yep, I've got that checked. Okay, what I wanted to check is where exactly that dot should be. And that dot, I believe, should be right on the edge of there. So it needs to ease in just a tiny little bit more. It so it gets the curve round, because again, this is on the 10 mil seam allowance. Now your collar will have some ease there. It's not the neatest bit of pinning in the world, that is it. Let's have another go. So I like pins because they're, they're, they're really accurate on the curve, but these are um, quilting pins, which are really quite long. They're not the strongest thing in the world, but I like, I like the length of them. And for anybody who hasn't watched my videos, you'll realise that I have, feel I have to keep talking, so I have to tell you about anything random while I'm working. So there, ah, oh no, that that looks that looks a bit better. Sorry about that bit of fluff there. It's very fluffy fabric, so that ease is much better on the slightly wider seam allowance. So I'm going to go so this at ten mil three eighths of an inch, and this one at the same seam allowance. On to the next stage. Here we are then, ready to start putting the zip in. So this is 20 to 22 in the Journey and 17 to 19 in the Monterey. It's exactly the same principles. So this is lying face down. The side of this, this hoodie is the same side as you'll see in the Journey instructions. I hope it's the same as in the Monterey instructions. So it's face down. This is the inside of the facing. That's the front and they're facing together. So we've got that right. Um, so what we do, I've already neatened the top of my zip. I've had to shorten it due to some planning error. Um, so we put the zip face down and we're going to slide it into this sandwich we're making. So let's line this up nicely. So I'm, I'm always a great one for either marking or for putting pins in to say exactly where the halfway point is. There probably is a marking on the garment but I've just put too much interfacing on there. We're going to slide the zip face down. So that's face down. So there's the end of my zip. It's actually a double ended zip. Don't worry about that. That's 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 just the one I happen to have. So it's somewhere between a, a, a planning issue and the fact that supplies are a bit peculiar here in England. And we're going to line that up exactly with that. I've just taken the pin out. That was silly. And I'm just going to pin that there. You could clip it. You could pin it. Doesn't matter at all. And like a lot of things, I'm going to work both ends first. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the same deal on that. Let me just go get a marker pen. I can use a biro. No, nobody really minds because you're not going to see this. What I have also done as a, as a double insurance is to, um, there you are, you can, you, can, you can mark on that. That's absolutely fine. Because you're not going to see that. Yeah, look, I've marked all over my hands as well. That's good skills. May as well just just mark on. You could use garment marking pens. 
uh, the downside to them is if you start ironing things, they, the colours don't show anymore. Anyway, right, so let's go back and we're sandwiching that in, inside there. Let's pop a few clips. Got all of this stuff to hand. And clips also go through that nice sturdy bit at the end. That's going inside the loop there. And what I'll also do is I'll orientate you and make sure that you can see where the next stage is going to go. I'm going to put that one in the top there. That's nice and neat there. And we only need to do one stage at the time. We're doing the front at the moment. So I'm just going to clip that right in there. It needs to be as tight as you can get it up to there because then the length will be right. And then that will be a perfect length for this bit. So let's go and clip each important stage of there which are the seams and this should have no give in it so you shouldn't need to stretch you shouldn't need to ease it to fit it should just fit because you can, as you can see I've interfaced all sides of that and if we line that up neatly that's great now this is going to be on a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance just have a look at your zip tape and see how much how much room you've got there whether you need to adjust that I've got enough room to line that up against against the edge as you can see um, so some may be smaller, some may be larger. I, I like um, quite chunky zips in hoodies, particularly hoodies of this weight. And I didn't plan for these clips to match the, match the zip. I think I, I really like this grey fabric, but I wanted just a little bit of a splash of colour. Um, I'm not putting ties in this one. Um, but I think a little bit of slush of colour and I'm going to put the um, the zip pockets in afterwards. Um, I just wanted to get this video done because I know a couple of people were, were asking about it. So I'm going to put, put the pockets in afterwards. So there we go. And what we do next is we baste that. And basting is basically big hand stitching. I like to baste. I'm not going to do all of this on camera because that really is dull to watch. I like to baste using a colour that is in the garment, in particular one that's, that's that's not going to show if it goes really wrong. So I'm just going to use white. So what I've done here is I've hand basted the zip um, through all the layers into this sandwich that we created at the earlier stage. So you can see my zip is just about poking out there. It's lined up neatly on the edge. It goes all the way up here, all the way through the layers, right up until the top. What I'm going to do now is sew that on using a zipper foot. Um, I've got a couple of zip feet. Um, I'm just going to show you these ones here. Oh, yeah, this is this is one of my this is one my lottie. It's a little bit worn to be sewing in because I've obviously got the sleeves up, but hey ho, it's nice. I'm going to wear it. Uh, this is the zip foot I'm going to be use, using for this um, because it gives control over exactly where that. It's going to show you really badly exactly where that bit goes, and I, and, I, and I like that because I can, I can just decide where I want to use it. Um, it's important to have good. You, 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 it goes through the machine nicely when, when you're sewing. Anyway, I'll stop talking and I'll go sew it in. So I've sewed through all the layers here, both layers of the front and the facing and the zip. And what I'm going to do now is turn it inside out, or turn it back to the right way and you'll see. Um, later on, there's a step to snip the corners. So I'm just going to pop those off now. It makes it a much neater turn to, to little corners to, to have those off already. So let's take those off. Look, this is the magic bit. See, and there's your zip. Almost ready to go. Now, I have used a double-ended zip just to be confusing. Just don't worry about that. Um, so, here we go. It's all enclosed nicely. I'm just going to have a quick look and check I haven't gone too far across on any of these seams. Um, what I might do is adjust a couple of those afterwards. Um, the downside of using a contrast zip is that it shows really, really badly if you don't get, get the, exactly the same seam allowances. But I just want to get that in for now and to show you the very next step. So the next one, we get a marking pen. Now, on this fabric, it's quite interesting to try and see these. I hope you can see that my seam is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across in a directly straight line and mark this is... Um, it's like a friction pen. It's a supermarket owned brand one here, but it's a, it's a friction pen basically by any other name. So there's the top one and we do the same on the hem. And this is so when you zip um, your hoodie shut, it looks level. So here's my, you can actually see my little blue mark there. I'm going to go across there, just mark it very carefully across there. And all of these will come out when either when they're washed or when they are pressed. 
if you are making the kangaroo pockets you'll also have an extra one to mark about here where the top of the kangaroo pockets uh, lie so, so you'll, need, you'll want to be doing exactly the same thing um, and what we'll do actually that line isn't very straight oh dear disappointed in myself let's let's try that instead somewhere in between right because what we'll need we'll need that for the next stage we're going to undo and remove our zip for the next stage to go ahead here we go and this zip comes apart like that it's a double-ended zipper it's just what i happen to have so now we're going to pin the zip into the other side so we've got a nice circle of fabric here. So there's my collar in my right hand and there's the, um, the waistband in the left hand. So remember the difference on this one is the piece is going to go in on its own and you've got some markings. So there's the marking on my waistband and there's the mark in my collar and there's the top and the bottom. So remember it has to be the wrong way up. And if you want to check your orientation, maybe even check it after you've clipped it. That's absolutely fine. So I'm going to post it into the gap here I've got the, the marks there so I did so many I've got a bit carried away and I'm going to line that up with both sides of the oops it's more than I needed both sides of the waistband and can go in there and it will feel a snug fit don't worry about that one little bit because it'll fit no forcing required I'm then going to go to pin the other end making sure there's no twists or turns in it so I'm going to go right up to the top end of it remembering there's my mark here which thoughtfully is showing on both sides so there's my mark I'm going to tip those seams upwards which we'll need later on when we get to a different actually I don't think it really matters anyway um, Make sure those line up nicely. And basically, you follow exactly the same principles that we that we've that we've just done. So you ba you base through all the layers, you sew it, and then you are done. It's very exciting this bit. But on this bit, you'll have to move these zippers about whilst you're sewing. Let's get a little bit straighter. I'm still on. Oh no, I'm not quite on camera. Just lining those up a little bit better. Because it does matter. Particularly, as I said, with a contrast zip. I like to make myself like life half of myself. I think if I was if I was going for an easy, easy ride today, I'd have put a white zip into this. But well, part of it was I wanted a different feature, and part of it is necessity. I do not have a white zip that length. So here we go, we're gonna, we're gonna pin our zip in. Get those little fellas out of the way. I'm not going to show you the rest. So I now have my zip um, enclosed in the, the loop there. See, there's my bottom hem. There's my collar on the top hem. Um, and you baste it and you sew it in exactly the same way. Um, I will sew that and return to show you. Here is our zipper all sewn in then. So I've got my collar to, my, to match up reasonably oh let's get that in shot that i'm quite pleased with that but to be honest on this fabric it doesn't show per doesn't show too badly um you can see that my basing stitching is showing there so i will uh, take that out later and my again get the that shot that one's neat and then they match up nicely at the bottom so if i undo this i'm going to top stitch it in all sorts shortly so you can see that on my right hand side of the as i would wear it that's all enclosed there I'm going to neaten that off and top stitch that because I like I top stitch everything to be honest and there you are there's the bottom of my zip and the top of my zip so when I wear it I'll use my right hand you have to orientate yourself almost the wrong way all the time and there we are and it does up smoothly to the top so pretty pleased with that I hope that helps you with your sewing bye bye now